Well, David, it is extraordinary to be talking to you while you are in Antarctica. Describe for me exactly where you are and what we can see behind you. Okay, so I'm on, in West Antarctica. I'm on an ice shelf adjacent to Thwaites Glacier, where I was trying to go a month ago, about 50 nautical miles that way. Instead, I'm on the Dotson ice shelf. We've been here now uh, over a month. Uh, we're decamping exactly at this moment. All the Canadian helicopters are airlifting all of our equipment back to the icebreaker. It's, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. You can see all the guys in the background moving stuff out. So this is moving day. And um, last night, the sun set for the first time. It's usually up 24 hours, but last night, the sun set. And it's starting to get cold. <laughs> And you had hoped to get to, to Thwaites. Uh, did the weather get in the way? Why weren't you able to, to go there? Uh, a month or so ago on the Korean icebreaker, we tried to cut through the sea ice, which was very heavy this year. We tried for a few days and we could not make it to Thwaites Glacier. Uh, then there's these very large icebergs that have collected sea ice around it. So nobody could get to Thwaites by ship this year. Um, Incidentally, last night, I did take a three-hour helicopter ride over to Thwaites that way, and we put in some temperature probes through cracks in the glacier, uh, hoping in the future we can all get back there and do our science. I feel like it just goes without saying, if you're a scientist in Antarctica, you have to be able to adjust on the fly, which you have. Uh, what have you been able to gather in terms of data over the last three weeks or so? We pulled up here on this ice shelf, the Dotson, and we drilled through 500 meters. Behind me, you might see some tower structures. We drilled through 500 meters of the ice. I'm standing on an ice shelf, which has the Pacific Ocean underneath it. And we measured very warm temperatures underneath that ice shelf. And it's causing this whole ice shelf area and Thwaites, the elevation to drop substantially several meters every year. One of the largest changes on the planet. And it's happening because warm water from the Pacific Ocean is coming underneath this part of Antarctica, which is quite remarkable. Which, of course, sounds dire and the impact it would have if, I guess, all of that ice suddenly crashed into the ocean. How dire is it? The long-term forecast is not great. All of this part of West Antarctica, uh, as our planet warms, ice probably melts is a likely outcome. It melts in a way that we're learning about how the air temperature changes, winds changes, ocean currents, and those ocean currents go underneath Antarctica and bring it down. So will that happen for certain? We're not sure. It's very plausible. It seems to be unrolling right now as we look from space with satellites and we put instruments underneath. All the things you might expect to happen if it was collapsing seem to be happening. And incidentally, in the background is South Pole, uh, right now, all of these glaciers are on a seafloor high, and once they go melt past that, there's no more pinning points until you reach the south pole of the planet. So it's it might be unstoppable if it happens. And 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 are we talking about years or decades or longer? I think we're talking decades to centuries. Um, one of the things is we've seen in the past, thousands of years ago, sea level rise by several meters in a century. So we know these kind of events happen. They've happened in the past. Uh, sea level naturally changes by almost 100 meters on the planet between ice ages. Most of the time, Canada is under an enormous ice sheet and sea level is almost like 100 meters lower. So there are these natural fluctuations in sea level and then there are these ones that are happening here now, which are partly natural, but we've also been running computer models and finding out that the way the currents are changing is due to a wind change, which ultimately has a greenhouse gas impact or influence. Now, I think uh, behind you on your left side is a Canadian helicopter. Um, and, and, and this is, a, I guess, an international uh, research project that's going on. That's right. So the um, we have the Korean icebreaker Ariane as our lead, and they've brought us south. We the drillers. We have the best ice drillers in the world from the United Kingdom, the British Antarctic Survey. We have support from the National Science Foundation of the USA, and we have absolutely amazing pilots from Canada. That's John Bishop over there from Vancouver, and. Um, it's just amazing what, as a team, we've been able to achieve with some good hard work and some very good luck. 
And it, this problem is way beyond the capability of any nation to address. So over the coming years, it's going to require a very large international effort to ultimately arrive at a forecast for society to say what might happen and when, because we're talking about potentially from here, Thwaites, up to a meter, but with the neighbors, several meters. Ultimately, Antarctica, up to 10 meters of global sea level change over decades to centuries, which would basically rewrite our global coastline. You're decamping today, as you said. In other words, getting ready to leave. Your home in Newfoundland is a long ways away. When, when are you going to get back there? On March 10th, I arrived back in Newfoundland. I live in a beautiful village, Brigus, Newfoundland, where my wife and I will retire. And I'm really looking forward to that. Antarctica has been fine, but it's, as I said, the sun set last night. An old Antarctic proverb, when the sun sets, time to head north, which is very true. So we've had a, a great time here. We've made some significant measurements of a scientific nature. We're all very excited about what we achieved. We had many, many failures this year, to say the least. Um, but if hopefully we can get the team back together and back here in a couple of years. Well, Skype worked for us, and it's fascinating to be able to talk to you while you're in Antarctica, David. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ian.